Gridiron Nation. We are back in the middle of the week for some more power rankings. We're bringing you another edition of the Frontier Athletic Conference Power Rankings. This one hanging into week eight. I am FAC reporter Blake Baker, joined by FAC reporter Connor Mills. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, none of the rankings have changed this week, but we're still going to get down into the nitty gritty. So let's get right into it. Jackson, still number one in the conference after a 48 to 28 win over Miami Trace. And that puts them at six and one overall. And boy, those Ironmen have really looked good. Yeah, those Ironmen favored the long plays last game. Uh, their quarterback, Jason Eisenhower, has 74 yard touchdown. Also had another rushing touchdown. Wide receiver had a 52-yard touchdown catch, and then Blake McCoy had two touchdowns, one for 65 yards and one for 72. They really took advantage of the holes and rushed for the entire field. Yeah, we talked about last week how Eisenhower needed to get a little bit more involved in that offense, and he certainly did in a win over Miami Trace. And this is a team that outscored the Panthers 27 to seven in a game that was tied at halftime. So that defense and rushing attack really warmed down and it shows you why they're so dominant in this conference so far. Absolutely. Coming in at number two, there's no change. Like you said, it's Chillicothe. Uh, they beat McLean last week 56 to nothing and that was all Brandon Moffmer. He is a tank out there leading that offense. Moffmer has certainly been the story and the biggest reason for Chillicothe's success so far, they too are undefeated in the conference. He had five total touchdowns last week, upwards of 260 yards, and he was 12 for 16 passing, so he was pretty efficient. And this is a defense that held McLean to 118 total yards. One thing going forward though, they got to cut down on those penalties. Nine flags for 80 yards against a team like Jackson later in the season that rivals them in athleticism and skill, they're going to have to cut down on those. Absolutely. Coming in at number three, it's Hillsboro Indians. They beat Washington Course House 41 to 34 last week, and that was huge in part because of Josh Keats and Mace, uh, Deion Burns. Yeah, this team is back to its full force rushing attack, 430 yards last week, a really good rebound week from, from the week before when they played Chillicothe. And you said it, Josh Keats and Deion Burns combined for over 300 yards and 200, or excuse me, 140 yards or more apiece. They had five rushing touchdowns in this game. Washington Courthouse, we talked about them a little bit, just lost to Hillsborough, 41 to 34. They come in at number four on our countdown this week. Richie Burns, 210 passing yards in this game and three touchdowns, but only a 45% completion percentage, filling in the role that Dylan Stewart, the big shoes that he kind of left after those first three weeks, he hasn't played since then, so really not efficient in the passing game this time around. Not efficient in the passing game, but he was effective in the running game. He had 83 yards. Then that was also coupled with running back Jacob Rice, who had 62 yards and two touchdowns. And then for the passing game, they did connect with Eli Lynch, had 103 yards and two touchdowns of his own. Yeah, that defense allowed 430 rushing yards. They got to take advantage of the chances that the offense had. The offense ran a whopping 70 plays in this one. So again, they had the chances, but when you allow that many yards against the team, especially on the ground and get, and get beat up front like that, it's pretty hard to win. Yes, it is. Coming in at number five, it's Miami Trace. Uh, they are one in six this season, and going into halftime against Jackson, I believe you said, they were tied 21-21. Yeah, Brady Wallace is still the guy in this offense. He's the biggest reason that they were tied at competing with Jackson. He had three total touchdowns on the very first play from scrimmage, an 80-yard touchdown run. Yeah, that touchdown run came within the first 11 seconds of the game. Biggest problem for Miami Trace, they never led after late in that first quarter. Their defense is straight up, got to make more stops. They gave up four touchdowns or 50 more yards, so they fell victim to the big play, and Jackson really took advantage. Coming at number six, it's still McLean Tigers. Yeah, they are 0-7 at this point after getting shut out once again by Chillicothe, 56 to nothing. This offense is really, really tanking right now. Justin Osborne, the quarterback, 35% passing in two interceptions in this one. They really could not move the ball. No, they couldn't. Their running back only had 40 yards on the ground. Wide receiver had 23 yards. Nothing was really going for them on offense, and nothing really has been going at all this season. Yeah, the recipe for disaster has been a lack of scoring on offense, and when you score zero points, obviously it's hard to win. And, and, and coupled with a defense that, that really hasn't stopped very many, they've had games like this where they've allowed you know 40 or more points more than a, on one more than one occasion this season. Excuse me. So that is a recipe for disaster. They, they're averaging about four points a game right now. Really, really, really tanking. So that'll do it for our countdown heading into week eight. We will be back again with midweek content week nine, and we'll run it down for you again. Hopefully we get a little bit of shakeup. That's going to depend on the boys on Friday night. So we will see you then. I'm Blake Baker. He's Connor Mills. See you on Friday.